Oh, cool. So what I have here is we want to solve this, and but we're going to solve these by perfect squares. And I kind of gave a little introduction video on what a perfect square is. And I've labeled, here are my perfect square numbers. So when factoring perfect square, we can definitely factor it the way that we've factored all of our quadratics when a equals 1. However, when it's a perfect square, we can really, really uh, make it a lot easier on ourselves just by understanding the relationship. So the first thing we always want to do is look at our c and determine, is that a perfect square number? Which, yes, you can see, is one of our perfect squares. Now, 9 is a perfect square. Was, there's, only, there's a couple factors of 9. There's 9 times 1, and then 3 times 3. And what we want to do here, so if this is our c, is our b 2c? Is that double 3? And you could say, yes, it is double 3. So if I was going to use maybe like my box method or my diamond method, I'd say 9, I'm um, sorry, wrong way. I'd say 6. What was I doing? No, I was doing multiplied. OK. So 9 and 6. What two numbers multiply give you 9, add to give you 6? Well, then obviously, yes, those two numbers are 3. So since my last number c is a perfect square, and then 3, uh, or my b is double 3, then those are going to be my p and my q. And since this is positive, both p and q must be positive as well. So therefore, I'll have x plus 3 times x plus 3. Now, there's another way you could also write this. You could also write this as x plus 3 squared. All right, But that's going to kind of get into some multiplicity. So we're going to use this um, by looking at this. And you'll see, though, that here it's really the same thing. You're just going to be setting up the same equation twice. And this is something we'll get into a little bit different in a different section. But one thing I just want you to notice is that this is going to produce two different solutions. I'm sorry, negative 3. So the solution is, I'm sorry, not two different solutions. It's just going to produce two solutions. And we'll talk about that in our multiplicity later. But you can see now that is going to be a value to solve for our perfect square trinomial. Thanks.